But first, we're joined by former Wisconsin governor, now head of the Young American Foundation, Governor Scott Walker, here on the Scott Sand Show. Governor, it's always a pleasure to have you on. Hey, thanks for having me back. I appreciate it. Uh, so Vice President Harris is in your state today campaigning, and I'm looking through all of the latest polling data. I, I would not have expected this months ago, but Wisconsin's in play, and in fact, Donald Trump has a lead in three or four polls that are out right now in Wisconsin. Yeah, it's just it's, uh, it's about as close as it can get. That's the way it's been the last two presidential elections. And the more people in Wisconsin, probably like they are in other veteran states, but particularly here in my state, the more people focus in on not the economy, not inflation, but prices. That's really what it's about. When they think of about paying a buck and a quarter more or about per gallon, when they think of uh, how many more uh, grocery carts they were able to fill just a few years ago uh, before uh, Biden and Harris, when Donald Trump was president, when they think about how much lower their mortgage or rent payments were, those are real issues. And for a lot of swing voters, uh, the more Donald Trump and J.D. Vance can talk about that, the more likely they are to win. Yeah, and I think J.D. Vance did a terrific job Tuesday night selling the, the Trump vision on the economy, on immigration. I, I thought there were a couple of stumbles. Uh, but if you were judging the debate like you would a boxing match, I think he certainly landed a bunch of jabs and a couple of body blows. Yeah, there's no doubt about it. It was a master class. You could see why President Trump picked Senator Vance. I mean, he's he was uh, he was smart without being cocky. He was um, passionate, uh, but, but he was still under control. He did a good job of uh, really responding to not only the attacks from, from Governor Walz, but largely, amazingly, yet again, uh, seemingly attacks from the two moderators. Who would have thought a few months ago that the moderators from CNN would have been the most fair of the three debates out there, but but they were the only ones who actually asked questions instead of inserting themselves. So I thought, you're right, Vance not only did a good job performance-wise, but to your point, more effectively, more importantly, I think, he did a really good job of explaining uh, why their goal was to make America more affordable again and how they do it. You know, it's it's interesting because I've known J.D. for now like three or four years since he began his Senate campaign here in Ohio. And uh, I watched him on stage destroy in the career, political career of Tim Ryan when he was running for Senate in Ohio. And and he's even improved his oratory skills in those three years since he's been in the Senate. Uh, I, I'm looking, uh, Governor, at the Wisconsin Real Clear Politics average, and it's under 1%. It's Harris by plus 0.8, so well within the margin of error. Tell us how Wisconsin shapes up and, and what areas of the state we should be watching that could affect the outcome of the, the state's electoral votes. Yeah, there's no doubt about it that the historically the two big cities, Milwaukee and Madison, although Milwaukee is more blue collar, Madison's more just radical like Berkeley. Those are the Democrat strongholds. The suburbs historically have been where the Republican votes come, although less reliable over the last few years. And really, um, rural areas like they do across America tend to be more Republican, but it's really the blue-collar, mid-sized industrial towns. You see that in only Wisconsin, you see it in Michigan, you see it in Pennsylvania, heck, you see it in Ohio. Those are the places that I did well in each of my three wins that uh, Donald Trump did well in in 2016. I think that's really the key is to see places like uh, Green Bay, Fond du Lac, Kenosha, Racine, uh, Janesville, the margins there will largely determine who wins. And while uh, Biden did, did uh, better than expected in the suburbs, and obviously Harris has put a focus there, the flip side of that is Donald Trump's done better uh, than expected uh, making inroads into the city of Milwaukee, again, particularly with blue-collar workers. So if you look back uh, historically, on October 3rd in 2020, Joe Biden had a six-point lead over Donald Trump. And in 2016, Hillary Clinton had a four-point-seven-point uh, lead over Donald Trump. Now, uh, according to the RCP average, Kamala Harris with a point eight average. Is is it a, a transition of the state, or is this a reflection of, of changing attitudes on Democrat policies? I think it's on policy. I mean, that, that's what it boils down to. I think that's the reaction you saw not just in this latest debate, but but a few weeks earlier in the debate where arguably Donald Trump, President Trump, did not do nearly as well, didn't take advantage of, I think, a number of opportunities, and still independent voters in my in my state, Wisconsin, and a number of other battleground states still seem very open to him, even after that debate, because 
no matter how well prepared, no matter how many talking points uh, Vice President Harris had, she still couldn't answer the, the lead question. Remember when David Muir asked her, you know, he said, your opponents criticize the point that the economy is not better than it was four years ago. What do you say about that? And instead of answering it, she went off into this wild, uh, weird, uh, <laughs> I was you know, born in the middle class stuff. Uh, which, of course, opened the door to memes all over America. But I think independent voters are smarter than we give them credit for. Um, many of them, in, again, in my state, battleground states, are are undecided because they don't. And that's why I say just as the supporter of President Trump, I, I take it head on. I said this the other day when I was campaigning with them north of Madison. I said, you need to say to your friends and neighbors, your coworkers, your family and others, Hey, I get it. Not everybody likes the way he talks. Not everybody likes the way he says things or posts things. But in the end, our lives were much, much better when he was president. And they can be much better again going forward And prices and border security and public safety. Um, set aside some of those other differences and look at getting the job done. We're talking to uh, former Wisconsin Governor Scott Walker, now head of the Young America's Foundation, YAF.org. Governor, I, I flagged you earlier this week uh, when I saw a tweet of yours go viral after the, the vice presidential debate. You tweeted, voters are long over January 6th. Walsh and the moderators are obsessed while most Americans are focused on issues related to high prices, border security, public safety, and free speech. They're tone deaf. I, I tend to agree with you. I mean, people are voting on the economy, and they're voting on when they see what's happening with crime in their city and the, the number of illegal immigrants that are coming in and the fact that for example, FEMA has spent a billion dollars in the past yeah. year, year and a half on illegal immigrants, but can't afford to clean up North Carolina and Georgia after Hurricane Helene. These are things that, that get the public's attention. But one of the, the lasting faults that I continue to find with Donald Trump is is his behavior on January 6th and his continued claims about about a stolen election, which I, I sure I think there may have been some some sketchy things that have happened around the country. But but Joe Biden won the election. And and I, I think that's an issue that needs to be addressed. And I don't think Donald Trump or J.D. Vance has has answered those questions adequately, to my opinion. I'm still going to vote for them, but I, it's the one bug that's still in my craw. Well, I, and I understand it. And I've said repeatedly to folks who are still worked up over that last presidential election, the best way to, to deal with it is by by working hard to win this one. You win this one free and clear. You win this one. Then, then forget about the past. What voters want to know is going forward, what are you going to do? I, I think it's clear. Certainly it is for me and others. If if we have, you know, which I hope will be the case in, in all these battleground states, including mine, if we have free and fair and transparent elections, which I hope and expect that we will, um, my hope is that Donald Trump and J.D. Vance and other candidates will win. But if they don't, uh, again, as long as people following the law and do what they're supposed to, uh, I'll, you know, accept those outcomes just like I did when I didn't like Barack Obama, but but he was elected president of the United States, and then I'll work my butt off to elect somebody better going forward. I think that's really the key is it's, it's wasted energy for us not right. to talk about now, uh, you know, the here and now about what we can do for the future as opposed to what's happened in the past. And I, I think part of that's on Donald Trump himself. We're continuing to bring that up on the campaign trail. Uh, just move on, man. we got to talk about what's important yeah, now. Yeah, like I said, the best thing for him to say to people who worked up is to say, no matter what you felt about the elections in the past, we got to focus on winning now. There's too much at stake. It's more than just whether or not Donald Trump's the president. When we hear things like price controls, when we hear people talking about you know suspending or pushing back into the First Amendment, when we hear those sorts of claims from people either from Vice President Harris, Governor Waltz, or others who are on their on their campaign team or future cabinet members, there's a lot more than just who's in the Oval Office the next four years. These are these are you know major uh, major major shifts in American policy. That I think any of us who are right of center need to be very very concerned about. We, we've seen foreign and policy. Sort of thing we hear from young people, yeah. you know, college students in our nationwide poll, not just our college students. We work with nationwide. Number one issue is the economy. So even college students get. Yeah, and these, these kids in college, they, they don't know if they're going to be able to find a job, if they're going to be able to afford their rent and food and to start a family. Those are the, the, the questions that, that they should be concerned about at that age. Uh, meanwhile, we're seeing foreign policy failures in, in Israel and the Middle East and in Ukraine. We're seeing. Uh, domestic failures with Hurricane Helene, and and m- more importantly, we're we're seeing uh, failures with, with everything. There's nobody been fired in in the Biden administration for not doing yeah. a, a good job, uh, whether it be on the border 
or Pete Buttigieg at, at Department of Transportation, East Palestine, Ohio. Uh, this is the second uh, ship backup we have seen in four years. Uh, and the longshoremen now on strike, well, we'll see prices go up and you won't be able to find bananas within a couple of weeks. By the way, do not hoard toilet paper. You do not need to hoard toilet paper. It's going to be fine. It's the bananas you should be worried about first. That's exactly right. Well, and and, and I said, Dean, in Wisconsin, where we make a lot of toilet paper, we'll just go up the way to the Fox Valley and get it if we need it. The banana is a little bit harder to go get along the way. There's no doubt about that. Uh, Tell us about the Young Americas Foundation, YAF.org. Yeah, we help train the next generation of leaders in the fight for freedom. So it's cool. People have been watching this new Reagan movie, which is fabulous, with Dennis Quaid. They filmed big chunks of it up at the Reagan Ranch, which we were honored to take over back in the spring of 1998. So whether it's there in the Midwest at the Reagan Boy at Home or out in D.C., we have conferences all over the country. And we have the largest conservative speakers bureau in the nation on college campuses as well as uh, for high schoolers you're interested in. And then all of our stuff's on digital. So we have over 1.7 million subscribers on our YouTube channel, YAF TV. All of that can be found at yf.org. So we, if you're a kid under it, you're a student out there, college, high school, middle school, you're under attack, YAF's got your back. Are, are conservative kids uh, afraid to to express their political ideology, whether at a high school or a college level today? I mean, we, we see alarming videos, alarming pictures from college campuses around the country with with pro Hamas protests are erupting around the around the country that and that should be yes frightening. yes they absolutely are conservatives Christian and Jewish students all are under attack and that's not just that high hyperbole it's not just anecdotes the University of Wisconsin system like many others actually did a survey recently and their own data showed that that conservative students feel intimidated in the classroom in their dorms all over the campus. The worst of which is what you just talked about. Think about this coming up on October 7th. It is mind-boggling to me. YAF has got helping students doing memorials all over the country uh, for what happened on October 7th, just like we did a few weeks ago for September 11th and have been for two decades. But get this. Th- think about this. Put this in, in, in terms I think every American can relate to. There are actually going to be pro Hamas rallies this Monday. That would be like having pro-Al-Qaeda rallies on September 11th, particularly September 11th, 2002, a year after the horrific tragedy, this just shows you how literally out of touch uh, the, the extreme elements are on the campus. Thankfully, most students don't fit into that. It's just the loudest, the most obnoxious, and the ones that many in the corporate media pick up on. We got to help those students who have a, a bit more sense counter that, uh, not with their own wild and crazy protests, but with memorials, with speakers, with knowledge, because the truth will ultimately uh, get through if, if we're able to fight for it. And they're, they're continuing on. I mean, it's, it's amazing that you've got uh, young, young America's members who were not even alive when September 11th happened, uh, and, and now they're, they're trying yeah. to keep those, those memories and that patriotism alive. But for an entire generation of Jews, I mean, they're going to remember October 7th as well, and, and that, that anniversary is coming up. Uh, Governor, it's, it's always a pleasure to have you on. You know I'm a big fan of yours. Well, thanks so much, and uh, thanks for what you're doing to fight for freedom as well. We appreciate it. Governor Scott Walker, Scott Walker on social media and yaf.org to learn more.